Welcome to the Round 22 MPL Queensland Highlight Show, where we review the pick of the action from last weekend's fixtures. Let's cross to Rafe Griffin with all the highlights. It's a bumper show this week with seven games and 40 goals, so we're a little later than normal. First, we go back to Round 21 with the Central Queensland FC Energy taking on the QAS in Rockhampton in a match we missed in last week's package. Brothers Kevin and James Fraser combining for the Energy's first goal. Kevin, the eventual scorer. Jordan Miller has been in the thick of the action lately for the energy. This time he crossed for Braden Crowley, and who with a quick 1-2 with Kevin Fraser, scored the second for the energy. The ball comes in from Miller, aimed Braden Crowley's way, Touches it on for Fraser and then back for Crowley and the energy second. Continuing the energy's late match run, Miller was rewarded with a brilliant solo effort. He first rounded Fronze, then Hoffman and slotted the ball past QAS keeper Chalmers. Jordan Miller picks up the ball, heads towards the goal, able to get round Hoffman just composes himself and puts the ball past Chalmers. A flurry of goals in the last five minutes plus stoppage time, giving the energy a 3-0 win to avoid the wooden spoon. Redlands caught up with their round 18 match against Palm Beach at the Cleveland Showgrounds. And with strong shouts from the vocal Devils crowd, Reuben Way was denied this penalty claim in the fifth minute. Getting away with that one, Palm Beach were the first scorers in the match. Jared Kyle ended a brilliant run down the right with a well-earned goal. On the replay, you can see that Kyle continues his run and puts it past keeper Stout. But that was the end of the section for the Sharks. Redlands recovering from the early shock and not being able to complete passes in their final third when Reuben Way was able to beat two defenders and get past Meskel at his near post. Way getting around the two blue shirts and cracking a goal from the edge of the box. After the throw in, Jason Mackershaus was able to latch on to a ball and then wonderfully put his shot past Meskel. On the replay, you can see that Jason Mackershaus picks up the ball just inside the penalty box, allows it to run a little, and then pass Meskel. Taking a 2-1 lead into the half, Redlands picked up where they left off. Mackershaus again with a wondrous finish, ripping it into the top of the net. Ball's played for Mackershaus. Takes his chances and Meskel with little chance. Dylan Stubbs started a movement. He got Ruben Way involved and with the aid of the woodwork, finished the move with a well-timed goal and Redlands were 4-1 ahead. Way with the pass for Stubbs. Gets down to the byline. And from the tightest of angles, and the aid of the woodwork, able to score Redlands fourth. Redlands won a free kick in good position. The ball was expertly placed for Reuben Way to head in from close range. In comes the free kick. And Reuben Way's there on the near post. 5-1 up with 20 minutes to go, saw Redlands' final charge remain well and truly on track. Making up for the penalty Way was denied early in the match, referee Ellen Milliner deemed this foul worthy enough of a spot kick. You can see the defender just tripping up Reuben Way inside the box. Nick Hume it was and the penalty's given. Way stood up to take the kick and it was 6-1 Redlands. Way also completing his hat-trick. 
way. Steps up, takes the penalty. But he hadn't had enough. Capitalising on some clumsy Sharks defence, he pounced on the ball, scored Redland seventh, a personal haul of, haul of four for the match, and a season tally of 20 in the closing minutes. Hume just unable to control the ball. Wayne nicks in, gets past Meskel and put taps it in to the empty net. Final score, Redland 7, Palm Beach 1. So moving into round 22 action and Moreton Bay Jets and the Queensland Academy of Sport met at Walter Park on Saturday night. The Academy on the board in the first 10 minutes courtesy of Matt Sauer putting the ball into the back of his own net. And you can see Sauer just gets a touch on the ball and Radovanovic, wrong-footed, can't make amends. Sam Simichuara started off a series of sweet passing moves with his teammates and was there at the end of it, on the edge of the box to double the advantage within the first 20 minutes. Ball falls for Sam Simichuara. Just on the edge of the penalty box, turns and beats Radovanovic. Jonathan Morea and Moses Joseph, they had consecutive chances to reduce the Jets' deficit. 20 minutes to go and the Jets were still 2-0 down, but the pressure that the Jets had been able to grit out all season finally told for the academy as Matt Capello scored. Capello, on the penalty spot, receives the ball and heads it into the back of the net. More pressure for the visitors, as firstly Fairgrieve tried his chances. Then excellent play from Moses Joseph found Scott McNeil, and he was rewarded for an excellent season with his first goal for the campaign. Joseph, the cross A. McNeil's way, free man, then a heavy touch in the QAS defence allowed Jonathan Murray to play pit pocket and he too had a justified reward, another first time goal scorer. Just a heavy touch there from the QAS defender. Allows Murray to come in, steal the ball. Two teammates, but he elects to go himself. Beats the final defender and then pass keeper Chalmers. 3-2 to the Jets and it was all hands on deck for the QAS, including keeper Fraser Chalmers, who got his head to the corner but steered in the wrong direction. The QAS narrowly unable to come away with a point in their final game of the season. Central Queensland buoyed by recent good form welcomed Palm Beach to Rugby Park in their final match of the season. Despite the midweek disappointment at Redlands, Jared Kyle had the visitors ahead within the first 60 seconds. Kyle gets a header on. Unlike midweek, the Sharks were the next to score. One of the smallest players on the park, defender Nick Hume, heading in from a corner. Lucas plays in the corner, and Hume able to get it into the energy net. 2-0 to Palm Beach at the half, and unlike previous efforts, Palm Beach went on with the job. A poor energy clearance, and Jared Kyle got lucky against Tim English for his brace. Jared Kyle played through, English attempts to save, can't hold on to it, Jared Kyle realises the ball's there for the challenge and scores. Tyler Stross scored his first goal for the Sharks after his mid-season move from Redlands. Once again the corner's played in, 
Energy attempt to clear, but it falls straight for Tyler Stross, who slams it into the top of the net. Fluid movement from the Sharks, and it was Chris Lucas with his 14th goal of the season. Justin McKay, inch perfect ball for Chris Lucas who's beaten the offside trap and a quality finish from him. Jordan Miller's attempt for a consolation was cleared off the line by Hume. Palm Beach were awarded a free kick. Justin McKay spotted English off his line and took an opportunistic shot from inside his half. Jordan Miller again with a chance to add to his season total of six goals, but it was lights out for the energy, being bitten by the Sharks 5-0. Far North Queensland Heat look to repay their local fans with their support in the final match, but it would be no easy feat against the informed Sunshine Coast Fire. But their cause was helped when informed striker Cameron Morrison scored his fourth in four games. Wonderful ball, played through for Morrison, Sato just hesitates, and Morrison's able to put the ball past Hall. But it wasn't going to be long until the Fire found their mojo. Michael Scarf replying for the visitors. Bishar puts the ball through and Michael Scarf able to beat Breckenridge. Nico Bishar, James Verdon and Scarf, well they all combined in this movement. Bishar with his ninth for the season, putting the fire ahead 2-1 just before the half hour. Bishar, he starts the movement, places it on for Verdon, who gets it on for Scarf, the return pass. For Bechar, expertly finished. The fire continued to threaten the heat back line. Alex Barlow fouled in the box and he earned his side a penalty. Barlow with the run in towards the box, tripped up and earns a spot kick. Barlow converted from 12 yards and it was 3-1 fire 30 minutes in. Well taken penalty from Alex Barlow. Breckenridge picks right but can't get there in time. Scarf continued to take advantage of opportunities set up by his teammates. Barlow to testing heat keeper Mike Breckenridge's line. Barlow turn provider for Scarf who turned from the edge of the box for a 4-1 fire lead minutes out from the half. Barlow puts the ball through for Michael Scarf and he's able to beat Breckenridge at the near post. A defensive error from the Heat and it was Scarf again taking full advantage. He chipped Breckenridge and claimed a hat-trick, sending his team into the break 5-1 leaders. Turns the ball over and a slip. Michael Scarf able to beat the advancing Breckenridge. Then a critical moment occurred early in the second half. A clumsy challenge from Verdon on Morrison gave him a second yellow and an early shower a minute into the second stanza, meaning he'll now miss the fire semi-final against Brisbane City. With the fire being a man down, that swung the momentum the Heat's way. A close shave for the Heat, but a scoreless second half with the match ending at the half-time score of Far North Queensland Heat 1, Sunshine Coast Fire 5. After the result of Brisbane City versus Redlands the previous night, the Brisbane Strikers needed only a point in their match against the Northern Fury to secure a final spot. Michael Eisenhut, though, continued his recent good form, sending Reese Kelly on his way. He was able to dribble around strikers keeper Dave Chambers and open the scoring in the first 22 minutes. Great ball through for Eisenhut. 
Strikers defence flat-footed. Chambers comes. Kelly's able to dribble all around him. Scott Coulson just can't get there in time and the ball ends up in the back of the net. Strikers gave up a cheap ball and once again it was Eisenhut who was provider. This time for player coach Gareth Eds to put the Fury up 2-0 on 28 minutes. Eisenhut picks up the ball, able to put the ball through the channel. Eds gets past David Roby and then Chambers, 2-0 to the Fury. Two goals to get a point was going to be a tough assignment for the strikers in the second half, but veterans Jonty Richter and Shea Hughes tried their best to address the situation. A strong penalty claim as Richter looked to be bowled over inside the box, but referee Matt Gillette had other thoughts on the matter. And it appears here as though it's more than just a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder push, perhaps the strikers unlucky not to claim a penalty. Strikers were just unable to find their range. Greg King with a well-timed ball in for Richter, but a great reflex save from youngster Matt Symes continued to frustrate the men in yellow. Full-time score, Brisbane strikers nil, Northern Fury two. Western Pride were one side that troubled Olympic in the first round and they look to continue to be a thorn in the side of the Premiers at Goodwin Park on Sunday afternoon. But it was the lethal Olympic connection of Denny Byrne, Tim Smiths and finally Jai Ingham who opened for the home side in the first 60 seconds. Tim Smiths for the advantage of Danny Byrne. McCarthy puts the hand up. But Ingham, he was well on side and able to compose himself and put the ball in off the woodwork. Lovely free-flowing football, quick passing and perfectly executed playing out from the back allowed Peter Drager to equalise for the pride on 29 minutes. Ball's played through for Peter Drager. Aparicio comes out. Drager able to evade him. And then make his way to Goldwood. And finishes before Matt Mundy can get there. An uncharacteristic defensive mistake from Kazuya Ito allowed Drager to pounce. And give the pinpoint pass for Russell Woodruff to convert at the far post. Pride ahead 2-1 just five minutes later. Drager runs hard to get the ball looks up spots Woodruff at the far post and delivers a perfect ball in for the header Pride put themselves under some pressure defensively and the goal sneak that he can be Tim Smiths was at the right point at the right time to bring Olympic back to 2-2 Ball's played across, Pride unable to cut it out, and Smiths is free at the far post. Jack Peach was able to nick in for Olympic, pass off for Ingham, and the goals continued to flow in the first half. Jack Petrie comes in and grabs the ball, Passes it off for Ingham, and Ingham makes no mistake. Drager attempted to take his side at level pegging at the break, before Danny Byrne was then denied by the woodwork. Pride lucky not to go another goal down early in the second half. Then Ingham collected his hat trick, and Olympic looked to be doing it easy at 4-2 up on the hour. Smiths lays the ball off for Ringham. 
and places the ball past Purdy. But the Pride weren't going to be out of it. Mario Aparicio having to make a reflex save. Then he's opposite Steve Purdy having to do the same thing with fingertips to repel Olympics raid. Drake was able to beat Matt Mundy. Nick Estathis looked to have shut Drager down, but couldn't effectively get the ball onto Mundy, and Woodruff turned poacher to bring the score back to 4-3. Drager, Estathis wins the ball, Mundy just a little bit slow to react, allows Woodruff to take advantage and poke the ball into the back of the net. The dynamic duo of Drager and Woodruff combined again. Woodruff making sure that the ball was going to go across the line and pick up his three goal haul and 10th for the season. Olympic unable to deal with it. Drager takes his shot, chests it down, Aparicio makes another save, can't get enough on it and Woodruff makes sure it goes over the line. The match tied at 4-4, Purdy able to get enough on Smith's shot to deflect it onto the crossbar. Then a run from box to box by Pride. And Drager scored the winner in the last minute of regulation time to cap off a remarkable comeback with a 3-1 second half to the Westerners. And excitement from Drager as he went over to the bench. Here's Drager picking up the ball. Scoring his 16th goal of the season and fifth game where he scored at least a brace. Western Pride spoiling Olympic celebrations of being awarded the Premier's Trophy. Coming away winners 5-4. Now here's Football Queensland Chief Operating Officer Ben Mannion with Olympic's Premier Trophy Ben's presentation. Captain, and uh, congratulate him and his team on a successful season and to wish them all the best as they represent Queensland in the inaugural NPL Finals. Well done, boys. <laughs> so congratulations to Olympic, 2013 National Premier League's Queensland Premiers. So firstly, recapping the first two games which were in our highlights package this week. In round 21, it was the Central Queensland FC Energy defeating the QAS 3-0. And in the round 18 catch-up game, Redlands convincing 7-1 winners over Palm Beach. Then on to round 22 results in our feature match. It was Brisbane City 2 defeating Redlands 0. Central Queensland FC Energy unable to perform in their last home game, going down to Palm Beach 5-0. All the goals in the first half in Cairns where the Sunshine Coast 5 beat FNQ 1. Far North Queensland's last game of the year. Moreton Bay Jets were able to defeat QAS after being 2-0 down for 70 minutes. Northern Fury continue to impress in their second half of the season with a 2-0 defeat of Brisbane Strikers away from home. And in an absolute thriller, a 3-1 second half effort allowed Western Pride to upset Premier's Olympic by four. So onto the table, and as we've known for a couple of weeks now, Olympic are Premiers and have finished the season on 55 points. Brisbane City has finished second and will go in with a home final against the Sunshine Coast Fire, who have finished third on 46. Redlands and Brisbane Strikers both on 39, but it should be noted that this is being recorded prior to the Brisbane Strikers catch-up match against Moreton Bay. Then it is Moreton Bay in sixth, completing the top half of the table. Northern Fury in seventh, Western Pride and Palm Beach in eighth and ninth respectively, with Far North Queensland, Central Queensland and the Queensland Academy of Sport rounding out the final three positions. Six action and two catch-up matches this weekend. The Brisbane Strikers take on Brisbane City at Perry Park on Saturday night at 7pm. But as an added treat, if you go along early, you'll see the under-20 sides battle it out to see who will be crowned premiers. That match kicks off at 4.30. And in a battle for eight, it'll be the Western Pride and Palm Beach Sharks. They'll meet in their final games for the year on Sunday at 3pm at Kippen Park, Goodner. And remember, you can join the conversation on our social media accounts, facebook.com slash NPLQLD, and our Twitter account, at NPLQLD. We'll be back next week with Moreton Bay versus Brisbane Strikers, Strikers versus Brisbane City, 
and Western Pride versus Palm Beach Sharks. And until then, enjoy your football.